the blue was a big, a big question. Blue is a very powerful color in the uh, Zohar and in the Kabbalah, and, and this is kind of a mystic color. So what blue do we use? What blue did they have access to? At that time uh, in Europe, you had woad, which is an ancient uh, blue color, and we had to learn how to use woad. And it's a tough thing. It's gritty. It actually came out kind of like sand, blue sand. And it was really, really, really difficult to, to manage. And then I remember finding that image of the, the woad mill, the, the horses grinding and grinding. I so, said, you know, maybe we really need to grind this thing. And Rick and Jason would sit there and they'd be, you know, <laughs> dripping with sweat, <laughs> grinding this stuff. We're going, good Lord, this is ridiculous. But then it worked. If you'd say, uh, I need some woad, and they'd go, how much do you need? And what are you using it for? And I want to be sure you really need it. <laughs> because, I mean, you know, you could get a, a teaspoon full of woad, and that's two hours of work. Every time we offer a new class, we always ask our students, what are their skill sets? And one of the questions I would ask is, who went to Hebrew school? When I asked that question, Ariel raised her hand. And so I said, OK, from now on, you're going to be the expert on Hebrew text. And she said, no, 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 I, I, I went to Hebrew school, but I wasn't a very good student. And so I said, Ariel, in this class, you're the only person who went to Hebrew school, so you are the expert. The bands that circle around the synagogue, they're inscriptions from Talmud, and they are conveying the importance of, of attending synagogue and the importance of synagogues. There's the pendentive inscriptions also kind of instructing prayer. The Ten Commandments are also there. Over this year, I've been able to look at higher resolution images, moved into actually laying out everything to its space and drawing every letter. We have just reams of text, 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 and she's practicing how to get the proper brush stroke to just do that one sweep. These are 21st century people, and they're taught to think like an individual. But what we, what we discovered trying to think like these painters and how they painted in the 18th century, we couldn't go off and think like individuals. We had to think like a collective artist medieval studio. They all were using the same brushes, the same brush strokes, the same sequence of adding color. So. They could repeat a flower from one side to the other, from the top to the bottom, with consistency. So we began to think and act like the medieval workshop. 